Well, hello. Uh, my name is Jody Skoll. I am your instructor for the MBLEX Review Course. Welcome. Welcome. It has been a wonderful week of many different successes and wanted to welcome you to this class. It's Client Assessment, Reassessment, and Treatment Planning. And today our class goes down in three parts. Three parts. Yeah, three. Uh, first part is test taking strategies. We're going to be here. We have a special guest in the house today, too. Part two of class is our learn, learn, learn. We're going to be talking all about client assessment, critical thinking, um, using your clinical um, reasoning and how to apply that in designing a treatment and what you're going to need to know for the MBLEX, of course. Uh, and then in the final part of class today, we're going to be dissecting some questions. But before we get started, we have a special guest today. You may not think it's a special guest, but it is special. I'm going to turn the floor over to Franzi because Franzi has some news. Hold on, Franzi. Yes. Let me change it. Let me let me just change our view here. All right. So we're going to change this view over to speaker view so you can see me. You can see Franzi. Franzi, what you got going on? Well, I passed the MBLEX yesterday. Day before yesterday. Yes. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And last week you were like, ah, um, what am I gonna do? How's this gonna work? Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Yes. High Francis. five. Boom, right? High five. Boom. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so talk to us. How was your experience, sir? Um, it was wonderful. I mean, I changed a uh, few things that I did on the past times that I had failed. Um, this time I went there a little bit earlier than usual. I sat in the car I mean, well, on my way there from the time that I left the house. I just kind of stopped reviewing most of the stuff that I was reviewing. I took it as I know and I believe it. And then as I was going, I was just listening to a lot of um, motivational music and things that, you know, kind of gave me a pump, a feeling that kind of grounded me and brought me down. So when I got there, I sat there for a little bit longer, listened to a few more music, caught my anxiety all the way down. And then I walked in. And for the first time I ever walked in, there was like more than one. There was like several people just sitting in the lobby. And I was like, oh, OK. So my anxiety started to go up, but then I was like, no, 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 no. Let me just relax. Um, I stepped out real quick because I know the other people was before me. So I stepped out real quick, got my mind together, walked around real quick, tried to, you know, jot a few things in my mind, you know, try to keep my mind going on. Um, staying positive. And then as I walked it back inside, she took all my information, but the, the camera wasn't working. So we couldn't take a picture of myself but before I went inside the testing room. Um, but it was it was definitely a few things that jumped ahead of you. But like you said, um, you could control, you only could control what you can control. So as they were going on and stuff like that, she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's no problem. Then I already had my um, pockets turned out because I knew that's what it was going to ask me to do. And he was like, <laughs> First rodeo, I said, no, it's not, but I bet you it's going to be my last. And then I walked in there with my head held high, sat there, breathed a few more times. Um, it was just basically trying to like understand the questions. I would definitely say read the questions more than once. Um, definitely go through it. Even if it's something that you don't know, you can try to eliminate as much as you do know. So, you know, and then try to, like, get into that breaking down of the actual terminologies and that to kind of get you closer to the words that you need or stick to what you know. You know, mm -hmm. go with the gut, stick with what you know. Nine out of ten times you do know more than you know. Because there was things that was thrown at me. I was like, oh, man, I know this. And there was things that was thrown at me like, hmm, I don't know this. But if I break it down to what I do know, then I got it. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. And so yeah. how will you be celebrating? Oh, well. Or how so have I, you been celebrating? Well, as soon as I got home, 
Well, it was it, it happened from once I walked the, once I got out the place and she gave me the passing grade. I got outside to the car and I usually would put on the GPS to get back home. I just started driving. I started calling everybody. I started driving. My 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 hypeness was like on a thousand. It was like on a thousand. Um, me and my fiance we went to Longhorn, the restaurant. Enjoyed a big. I enjoyed the biggest steak I ever had. I was like. We're back. We're back on level. I mean, we might as well eat as we want to eat. So <laughs> exactly, it's, exactly. You just yeah, you just so, got yourself a new revenue stream, my friend. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And what is what is your vision right now for practicing? So right now, um, I had got a phone call. Well, I had got a phone call from before from Massage and Me. So they're planning on hiring me. I'm um, sure they are. <laughs> I have a. I have a room which I had already since I since I knew I I felt like I was going to definitely pass this one. I had already bought my new massage table. I already set my room up to start, you know, having some my um, own personal clients here and there. But um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to put oh, my foot to the ground. And you know, just a, a quick look back. This sounds like it was your second time taking the test. No, this was actually this was actually number five. So I fell forward four times before that. You know what, baby? And here you are. Yeah. Here you are. And guys, and definitely finish the test. Because one of the ones that I, I knew, I felt that I definitely had passed that one too. But I, because I didn't finish it, it got a feeling great. So like you want to finish the test to at least know where you gauge at, guys. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you've already been contacted by your an employer. You have your room set up. This is also a beautiful example of you holding the vision. Yeah. Feeling that feeling of what's it going to feel like you know, when I'm ready to practice. Yeah. Definitely Setting prepared. that intention. Yeah. Ah, I am so happy for you. Um, and just, I, and I want to say thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story. What city are you in, Francie? We said, wait, city, I'm in South Carolina, Buford. You're in, you're in South Carolina. Well, they are lucky to have you in South Carolina. So, uh, thank this you. is terrifically exciting. Uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Uh, and also, by the way, um, yeah. that once you, once you do launch, yeah, hold on just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> So once you do launch uh, into your career, uh, I do offer business mentoring just as for everybody and for you, Frenzy. Um, yeah. If that's something that you want a little guidance on, uh, certainly uh, business mentoring isn't for everyone. Uh, but if you would like a little guidance on crafting uh, your, um, your career and kind of setting an intention, because to be honest, the first like 100 clients, I always say get 100 clients under your belt, right? Um, uh -huh. Because that way you actually get a sense of the style, the type of clients that you really right. like to work with. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so congratulations again, Frenzy. I'm really, really happy for you. I think we're all like, yay. <laughs> and thank you, Frenzy's congratulation post going up soon. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Good luck and go at it, guys. Don't believe that you got it. That's you got. That's the first thing to do is believe you got it. And and what an example of of keeping the faith, Frenzy. I'm I'm just you know you must feel so proud you know, that yeah. and and just you know like got it. Yeah, because when I walked out the room, when I walked out and I came to come get my stuff the lady was like why do you have such a big a smile on and she didn't even give me the paper yet she was like why do you have such a big smile on i said because i know i passed she was like well here you go congratulations <laughs> yeah so definitely, yeah and you know these, these, these people at the testing center they mean well but mm -hmm. they like do. but they like say things that can throw you off of course yeah but they do. that's a beautiful example of game day prep Right. And so yeah. we say this is game day, the day that you <clears throat> go in to, to take your test. That is your game day. That is your Super Bowl. That is, you know, that is race day. Yeah. And so getting there early, uh -huh. wearing some comfortable clothes. Right. Having your head straight. Uh -huh. 
you saw people in the in the area and you're like, okay, let me just step outside for a minute. Take it, you know, and and being an observer of yourself. Yeah. As you're going through this process. And mm -hmm. and not taking on anyone else's story. Nope, not at all. Yeah. But like you said, you uh, prepare yourselves, guys, to take the picture, be ready that you're gonna pass and go on with it. And I really appreciate you, Jody. Those test taking, um, those practice tests definitely was was some of the number ones, you know, some of the number one things that kind of prepped me heavy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're mm -hmm. here for to to not only indeed. Yeah. So high five, babe. Boom. All right. <laughs> So All let's right. get to our let's get to our learning uh, for today, and uh, let's see. We already did with this. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So welcome to client assessment. Uh, this is client assessment, reassessment, and treatment planning. This is about. 15 questions on your MBLEX uh, will be around your ability to use clinical reasoning. Some people call it critical thinking, um, but it's taking all of your clinical knowledge and applying it to design a treatment. All right. So some of our questions today came from uh, Laura Allen's book, The Plain and Simple Guide to uh, Therapeutic uh, to the Emblex Questions. Great book, great book. Love Laura Allen. And here is what the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards tells us is on, is on the Emblex. And that is, uh, we're going to be looking at doing a verbal intake. We're going to be looking at doing a health history form. We're going to be looking at different types of assessments and then applying your clinical reasoning to rule out contraindications, to set realistic goals, to manage expectations for the client, uh, to evaluate uh, how your treatment affected your client, to plan your next treatment, and to have a strategy around how you're going to be treating. Now, this clinical reasoning, it implies that you are going to have a relationship with your client. Now, if you work on a cruise ship, if you work at a hotel, uh, you may be in a situation where you're only seeing a client one time, kind of a one and done. That still gives you the opportunity to design that treatment and to paint a picture for your client of future treatments, maybe not with you, but how they could use massage therapy to help with their current uh, with their current symptoms. But let's let's get into it. All right. So the order of a client assessment. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the interview. We're going to see the health intake sheet. The client interview uh, usually means you have a document that you are reviewing. Maybe you're gonna be using an iPad. Um, if, if you are using an iPad, make sure you have access to that health history. Um, I'm a big fan of paper. I know a lot of offices aren't, uh, but my health history for a client doesn't get lost, doesn't get erased. Um, but we need to have some semblance of what's going on with that client. You are going in blind if you do not have this health history form. So how often do you want to review the health history? Well, the health intake form is usually done on the first visit, right? Just on the first visit. However, that health history form, that client file, will be pulled for every visit, ideally, right? However, a verbal check-in is done every time with the client. I remember getting a massage. It was at a franchise. The therapist didn't speak much English. They walked me to the door of the treatment room, pointed to the table, and then shut the door. 
Now, be, me being a massage therapist, I opened the door and startled the therapist. And the therapist said, yes. And I said, did you want to ask me any questions? And the therapist said, no, and closed the door. <laughs> I was like, well, isn't that interesting? I, you know, and I immediately lowered my expectations for that massage session. So doing a verbal intake with a repeat client, doing a pulling the chart, reviewing what, are you going to remember the last time they came in? Um, if you did notes, you will. Yeah. So that first health intake can take as long as 15 minutes. Depends on how complicated the health history is. So be very careful when you're booking your sessions or whoever is booking your sessions for you. Every hour on the hour is not a good plan. Let's get back to what's on the Emblex versus the actual application in your practice. So could take as long as 15 minutes. You'll be doing different types of assessments and analysis with that intake. You want to be aware of the visual analysis. You want to be able to um, know that that includes watching their movement, maybe doing a postural analysis. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. You may be doing a palpation, you may be actually touching where they say it hurts. And uh, there are some special tests I want to make you aware of. You may be tested on on the Emblex. So the client interview is the health history form. There are many health history forms online that you can see. And we gather this data from the health history form. We gather the information about medications they're on. And then we help it to inform our treatment planning. So I like to say there's gold in them, their hills. And to tell you about a personal experience, I arrived at my client's home, my client for uh, to do a massage uh, for this lovely lady, uh, and she was already in her robe. And I felt a little bit of pressure to hurry up. So the whole time I'm setting up, she's there having a little chat, but standing in her robe. She was obviously ready to get on the massage table. So once I had the sheets on the table, I stepped out of the room, she got on the table and we began. Had a lovely session. I asked her a few general questions, didn't see any um, general contraindications. As I was finishing the session, I like to do a little scalp rub as long as they're not gonna be you know, going out into their, you know, they don't mind getting a little oil or cream in their hair. And as I rubbed on her scalp, I felt the most interesting deviation in her cranium out of 22,000 massage sessions that I've done. I have never felt anything like that. And so I paused, I palpated, And I said, huh, I'm trying to like place it. I'm going through the card catalog in my head on what this could possibly be. Because it wasn't a divot in the skull, like when you fall and you hit and there's a dent. It was like rays. And I'm like, oh, this is so interesting. And the client said, oh, you may be feeling where I had my craniotomy. Craniotomy. They had drilled through her skull to remove a tumor behind her eye. That would have been good to know. Now, that was not recent surgery. It had happened many years prior. But there's all sorts of things that happen with an old wound. There's muscle memory. You know, was it sensitive? Did she not want me to touch it? I should have asked, have you had any major surgeries? Now, it would have been her decision whether or not to tell me, but I didn't have her fill out a health intake form. You think it would have come up? Yeah, it would have. And I almost stumbled into a landmine of 
of issues that would have been that that could have been very uncomfortable for the client because I didn't do a health history because I didn't do a health intake sheet and boy did that remind me and now you bet your bottom dollar I always do a health history <laughs> all right so this is the order of your of how things progress you're going to do the interview you probably have are while you're doing the interview, doing a visual assessment, and then you may go ahead and palpate, palpate the, the client. So visual assessment is a method of gathering data based on what you see. If you're walking down a hall, if you see your client walking in, you may um, be able to assess their posture or their gait. Let's first talk about posture. Posture is something that we visually, we look, we see, we visually assess. And this is some feedback maybe you want to give the client. You may have seen this particular chart, um, this particular um, postural assessment wall chart, either goes on a wall or a door, and it helps us to pinpoint postural deviations. And these are words you might see on the emblex, postural assessment, wall chart, postural deviations. So just get that rolling in your head. And you see here um, on the right-hand side, this is a pretty evenly, this uh, little red line would be considered your plumb line. There's a weight uh, on the bottom of a string that gives you a straight, straight line. So this is one way we do a postural assessment with a wall chart or a grid behind them. We always do our assessments from anatomical position. So if we're facing the person, we can either have them facing us in anatomical position or they can turn around. Let's take a peek. If you are going to visually assess this person, What would you say about their, about their, what do you see? I'm not going to even, what do you see? So you can put it in the chat. Let me go ahead and open the chat. Oh, left it. Yay. Mm-hmm. I see the slouch. I see the arched back. Excellent. Hey, Erica. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Curvy spine, yep. Anterior rotation, bilateral shoulders, hyperkyphosis. Good, I love those words. Not sitting up straight, head forward. Good, yes, all of those things, right? So the, if, they're, if this is your next client and they're sitting doing the health intake in this posture, there are certain things you can visually assess because this is what it normally would look like, right? That's a, a difference in the posture, right? So you see that slouched forward, forward head position, um, each of these things. So visually assessing, and you don't have to give off of that feedback to the client, but it is part of your critical thinking, part of your clinical thinking, part of your clinical reasoning that you are going to use to design your treatment. I see a couple other comments. Forward health tilt, yep. <laughs> we call that shrimping. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, you're looking like a shrimp, right? Melissa says we call that shrimping. Okay, so that is it. You, great. You just did a visual assessment. Oh, and if you see a client uh, or if you yourself find yourself with this posture, um, you know, one of the ways that you can correct this posture, even just now while you're sitting, Go ahead and bring your arms out to your side. Bring those shoulder blades into retraction. Some personal trainers will call it crushing the walnut between your shoulder blades. You can use weights if you wanted to. You could use a band if you wanted to. But it's a lovely way to open that chest. Now remember, our scope of practice does not involve exercise. We can demonstrate a posture for our clients, 
but we cannot prescribe an exercise. Remember, that's scope of practice. Now, if you're a personal trainer, you can talk about exercise all day long. Yeah. Um, yes. And Ms. V says that could be laziness. It could be that your client is tired. And that's all good. That's all good. But just for your own benefit, know that just by bringing those shoulders and those shoulder blades into retraction, that automatically brings your sternum towards the sun. In yoga, they say sternum towards the sun, right? Open heart. All right. And what do you see here? Mm -hmm. Now, normally your client is not going to be standing up against the wall, but on your emblex, I want you to have a visual of what this condition is called. Let's see. So what do you see? What do I got? Yes. Good. Forward head position. So, and we get that from computer, right? Computer, driving, being on our phone. So yes, so these muscles, these scalenes, this SCM gets short. The weight of the head bears, um, makes these muscles in the back work harder. But this is you using your visual assessment skills to think about, okay, how am I, what are changes am I going to see in the body? What changes do your client, does your client want to see in the body? One more with this postural assessment. What you see here, if you have your client turn around and you've got this grid, can you see this flat foot? See how the arch is right? We're talking about client assessment and we talk about soap notes. So what does soap stand for? Take a look at the answers. Be careful. So A, subject, object, assess, and plan. B, subjective, objective, assessment, and protocol. C, subjective, objective, analysis, and procedure. D, subjective, objective, assessment, and plan for future treatment. Let's get rid of one wrong answer, okay? We know it's not letter B, right? Protocol, no. All right, I've got a bunch of answers in there. Let's see. Careful. Oh, yay, good. Good, Angie says it's not A, you're right. Yep. Okay, let's go. Ms. V, yes. Kiona, yes. Alana, yes. Melissa, yeah, you got it. Lauren, yes. Uh, Aite, yes. Vanessa, you got it, good. Marina, yes. Tiffany, yes. Ensley, yes. Vanessa, good. Oh, Vanessa, double check yourself. Nucha, yep, you got it. Myra, Myra Renee, yep. Good. Winnie, yes. Excellent. You got it. Best answer, subjective, objective, assessment, and plan for future treatment. See how close A is to D? Looks like it could be right, doesn't it? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Best answer. Melissa, on fire. Tiffany, yep, good. All right, good job, you guys. We have types of questions that we ask the clients. They're general, specific, and pain, right? So which is the pain question? Be careful, be careful. Which is the pain question of these questions? When we do a, a client assessment, which is a question about pain? A, on a scale of one to 10, what is the level of the pain right now? B, your pain started about a week ago. How are you feeling overall today? C, have you received other treatment for this condition? D, what medications are you on? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, 
I can eliminate one wrong answer. Medications, no, right? Medications are not a question about pain. You guys are on fire today. Yes, on a scale of one to 10, what is the level of pain right now? That is a very, that is a pain question. When here I mentioned, so thank you for being in class today. Thank you for taking this time to study. Uh, it is, my name is Jody Skulls. I am your instructor for the MBLEX review course. And uh, we're here every week, uh, getting ourselves game day ready, ready for that game day, man. So uh, ready to pass that MBLEX. See you again soon.